In this lesson, I'm going to take you through the solution to the chessboard pattern. Now, if you recall, the challenge was actually to produce an 8x8 grid and then to color each alternate cell, one being black, one being white, etc. So we end up with this chessboard pattern. Now, the challenge itself should have been fairly straightforward. So I'm going to go across to Visual Studio Code. You can see I've set up a folder called chessboard. And in there, I'm going to place two files. The first one is going to be index.php. And the second one in here is going to be my style.css. So I'm going to do a little bit of styling here. Now, my index.php, the first thing I want to do is to set up a very basic HTML template. Now, because we've got Emma installed with Visual Studio Code, the easiest way to do this is just to type in an exclamation mark and then press the tab key. Let's change the title to chessboard with two S's, not three. And in the body section, this is where I'm going to place a table. And inside the table, I will have table rows and table cells. So the first thing is just to declare my table, the table tag. Inside my table tag, I'm going to open a PHP code block. And we'll close that off. Now inside my PHP code block, what I want to do here is to think about how I'm going to structure those table rows and table cells. Well, clearly we have a loop. It's going to be a loop for the rows and then a loop for the columns or the table cells. So what we have is a nested loop. So the first thing is for something to be true, I'm going to do something. Inside here, well, this is going to be my rows. So my rows will start at one. And because it's an eight by eight grid, then I know that my rows will only go to be less than or equal to eight. And then finally, to finish this off, I just have my rows incrementing once through each loop. So rows plus plus. Now inside this loop, this is where I'm going to echo at my table row. So echo at a TR. Now I've got auto closing on here, but I'm going to remove it from here. And I'm going to place it in a separate line, line down here, and you'll see why in a second. So close that table row. Inside this table row, this is where I'm going to produce a second loop. And that loop's going to be for my columns or my, my table cells. So for something to be true, I'm going to do something. And inside here, this is where we'll have the columns. Now the columns again will start from one. The columns will also be less than or equal to it. And the columns will also be incremented by one each time through the loop. All I need to do in here is to echo at the table cell. So echo TD, semicolon to finish off. We'll flick across to the browser and we'll just do a quick refresh. And we'll go into the chessboard. And you see, I don't see anything, but the code is actually being generated. What I need to do is to do a little bit of styling so I can actually see the table on the screen. Let's go back, go into the style.css, and let's just target the table first of all. And what I'll do on that, I'll just have a border. So my border, I'm going to have as one pixel. It's going to be solid, and the color will be black. Let's go into the index. Let's just tie that style sheet to my index page. So the first thing here is we have a link. The relationship here is going to be a style sheet. And the href was the link to it. It's going to be style.css. And we'll just close that off. Now, if we go across to the browser and refresh, there we can see we have our table border. And it's one pixel and it's solid and it's black. That's a very small table, so we need to do something about that. So let's flick across again to our style.css and let's target the table cells. So the TDs. Well, the first thing here is let's give them a height and a width. So my height, let's say, is 50 pixels. And we'll also do the same for the width. Give them a width of 50 pixels. Go across, cross and refresh. And there you can see I do have a much bigger table because those cells now have uh, bigger dimensions. Now, the next thing to consider is, well, I need to style the alternate cells black and white. So I'm just going to target the black. Now, the way I'm going to do that is just to consider the row value and the column value. Now, if you think about that first cell, the row value is one and the column value is one. 
So if I was to add them both together, I would get two. The next cell to that would have a total of three because it's row one and columns two. So two and one is three and that will continue. I'll get two, three, four, five, six, etc. And obviously the alternate cells, so every second one would have an even value. So if we start with the first one, that value is two, then three, then four is the next one I want to color. So in other words, whenever one of those cells has a total value, that's an even number, I want to color it black. And the way I do that is in here is I'm going to have an if statement. So if something is true, I'm going to do something in here. Well, what am I going to test? Well, I'm going to take the rows value, I'm going to add it to the columns value. And what I want to do is to test if that is an even number. And the way we do that is with the modulus operator, which is the percent sign. And obviously I'm checking the modulus of two. So is it an even number? If that is equal to zero, then we do have an even number. Now, the way this works is very simple. We take the row value and we add it to the column value. So if it's row was one and column one, the total would be two. We then divide it by two and see what the remainder is. Now, if there is no remainder, then it must be an even number. And that's the way that works. So if that is true, then what I want to do is, well, I just want to echo out this table cell. So I'll pop that in there, but I'm going to assign a class to it. So class equals, I'm going to give it a class of black. And the next thing I want to do then is just to style that class back black before I forget. So dot black. And all I want to do in here is just give it a background color. And the background color I want to give is just black. Okay, back to my index. Well, if it's an even number, we're going to style it black. Else, I want to do something else. And what do I want to do? Well, I just want to echo a standard cell. So I'll just pop that in there and just close this line here. Okay, so that should finish it off. Let's go across to the browser and do a quick refresh. And there you can see I have the grid pattern. Now, if I just zoom in a little bit here, you'll notice that there is a gap between each of these cells. And if you recall in one of the previous challenges where you had to produce a 10 by 10 grid, you had gaps between those table cells. And I said the way to tackle that was by collapsing the border. And we do a similar thing here go across to the style, go into my table, and we're going to do a border dash collapse. And we just want to collapse that. Now when we go back and refresh, there we have a much tighter grid pattern. Now, if you enjoyed this challenge, remember to give a thumbs up. That just gives me an indication of the sort of level I need to go at with these challenges. If you want to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon, then you will be notified about each new challenge that I post and of course the solutions as well. If you want to see anything in particular, write a comment below. I do read them all and I try to respond to every single one.